Without further ado, let's get right to it. We have a lab based on its energy and power, right? It's mm -hmm. the uh, NGSS style yeah. of, um, of energy and power. This is great. Let's give a big round of applause to Sarah and Adriana. Okay, so I'm Sarah Whitaker. It's says Sabrina Whitaker. It's a long story, um, but uh, you're all, we're all friends here, so please come here. Uh, this is... Adriana Martino, we work at Farmingdale. This is uh, transforming energy and power into an NGSS investigation. So, the computer is here. Oh, well, yeah, I can just right over there. Mm. All right. So, this is taking that uh, stair lab and we're transforming it into an engineering, more NGSS uh, investigation here. So, uh, we're going to be focusing on modeling and engineering practices. Uh, and you can see that the stair lab, we're, con we're changing it into a conveyor belt, like our minions here. So the change, why the change, like um, obviously the NGSS, the new standards, and also we felt that even though the lab was fun, like everybody running up, we would have the kids run up like two flights of stairs and say, are you a horse? Like can you generate a horse power of power? But then we felt that like, as the years went by, like some kids were feeling funny or self-conscious for whatever reason, or they weren't physically able to run up the stairs. And so, um, yeah, so we just figured, well, how can we do this that we make it like a little more inclusive and that everybody can do it? And um, so, yeah, so that's. Yeah, I've had students who were um, uh, overweight who didn't want to participate like at all, and it just completely shut them down. I've had I've actually had a, a student with who had had two heart transplants and she can't participate, mm -hmm. um, and so this makes it more available to those students. Um, so yeah. All right. So we're actually looking at this from an energy point of view. This year we uh, our two classes our sister classes for Regents Physics, um, and this. This investigation, by the way, it can go for regions, but it would be easy to transform it into an AP uh, investigation as well. Or even like <coughs> conceptual physics. Yeah, it has a lot of a project for them. Yeah, it has a lot of options because I actually gave it to my STEM careers class this year as well, uh, and they're looking at it as well, and they're freshmen, so they don't know any of the physics like at all or the math. Anyway, um, so this year we are starting with energy for regions physics because we are. Um, taking in the peer physics curriculum, that's what we're using. It's not peer instruction with Eric uh, Mazur. I think they are somewhat related, um, but I don't know the connection. Anyway, it's through Colorado University. We saw them at um, NSTA. There we go. At NSTA last year, and they were. It was really impressive. <coughs> this is focusing on the conceptual act, uh, aspect of the physics because, as um, he stated. That's where students struggle, is that conceptual uh, piece. So anyway, we're starting with um, energy blocks. There's two different ways we look at the conceptual aspect of uh, the, the lab. And we have been getting pushback. Like we just, we, we've been reading his book and we gave our students a survey, like, um, and a lot of them are complaining about the conceptual because they just want the numbers and plug into the formula. And so doing like a little weekly with the project kind of got them, um, they were really we excited agree. about this project. They really, like one of the, I should share this at the end, but one of the students, uh, he wants to go into engineering and after he did this, he's like, so can I call myself an engineer now because I designed and, and made this. So uh, they really enjoyed it. So we're gonna show like two ways to model energy, one way with blocks and then the other way that we've been doing it with our new uh, curriculum. So, and I got this, uh, I was at the energy and equity uh, workshop. If you um, Google it, this is a. Um, it, it's funded by NSF. Uh, it comes with like the 2,500 stipend. I encourage all of you to apply and attend next year. It's virtual. Um, be prepared for some responses. You have to think deeply about yourself. Uh, just I'll warn you because I didn't have that warning. Uh, <laughs> um, but it it is actually really beneficial. And but that's where I got these slides. So the first one is uh, we're. Um, looking at energy as equal chunks of stuff. Uh, this first example is just taking a wagon and pushing it up a hill. So 
Um, the different forms of energy are different letters. So here we have kinetic energy, gravitational energy, and uh, it's slow and fast. So the question is, how did more energy get into the wagon? And um, you can see the kinetic energy here and the gravitational going, um, and it's getting faster. So there's more kinetic and more gravitational as it goes up the hill. And this would be something that the kids, like as you get into modeling, like you could give them whiteboards and, and have them come up with the model or something like that. Yeah, that's how we do it. They, they get to do it. I do one example with them. Um, I don't remember if that's in the slide, but we'll see. So the only way the energy of the system can change is if more energy is added to the system or if it leaves it. Um, and we'll always be asking where did the energy come from and where did it go? So in this case, it came from the child and you can go back further than that and get them to the sun and whatever. Um, but right now we're just focusing on the child. So we start with these uh, two, two rectangles. We have the child and the wagon. And if you notice, these are the blocks still. So we have kinetic uh, and gravitational and kinetic and gravitational with the wagon. They start with the same energy um, to begin with uh, and you can keep going. Uh, and then you see the, the arrows. So those arrows show the different types of transformations. Um, the child speeds up the wagon by pushing it and the child transfers kinetic energy to the wagon. So you can see uh, that the kinetic of the child goes to the kinetic of the wagon. And what's important is the same number uh, the same, yeah, the same number of energy blocks that starts with, that's what you end with. You can add things for thermal energy if you want. Um, you can kind of leave it open-ended for the students to come up with that and be like, hey, don't we have to consider friction? And then you're like, okay, so how do you want to do that? So it can, you can keep it simple or more complicated um, as you wish. And like with the child's energy too, like, <coughs> something like depending yeah. how far back we go, I don't know if they're going to change that with the regions, because I'm thinking like now he was just saying the tie-in with the living environment, like cause yeah. our new curriculum said like, you know, well where does the child get his energy from? The potential energy like from the food that he eats? Yeah, or, from metabolism and yeah. things like that. Well, yeah, maybe that might be the tie-in. Right. <laughs> so, um, so the child speeds up the wagon by pushing it. The child transfers kinetic to the wagon. That's what we just said. And then as the wagon moves along the ramp, it gets higher and some of that kinetic energy, and notice it's still within this box of the wagon. The kinetic then is transformed into the gravitational. Uh, some of it's, um, yeah, so keep going. Oh yeah, so he's really adding. And then the child doesn't slow down, so they must be getting more kinetic energy from their body. So that is included there. Uh, so that they understand that that um, energy is never created or destroyed. And they kind of get that and can tell you that back to you, but they don't necessarily think about it um, and making it so that the blocks are there and counting them up emphasizes that conceptual point that the energy is not lost or gained. Okay, so um, the objects are areas, they're the boxes. And then the units of energy are different types of letters. The biologic, the metabolism is B, kinetic is K, and gravitation is G. Um, and the energy transformations are <coughs> represented with arrows. And these are different types of energy transformations, uh, transfers. So you can have them label those arrows uh, to really emphasize the different energy changes. Quick, can you oh, go back? Go ahead. Adriana, can you go back yeah, two slides, please? One more. Oh, one more? Um, the kid's going up the ramp too, isn't he? Yeah. So this shouldn't is the, child. the G be increasing for the child? It's here. Oh, did that? Okay. Because yep. I was looking. Yep, yep. Because yeah. yep. over, over there, yes. over there the, yep. you got the three blue Gs, but here you only got the one. Yep. Um, so we have to keep, so this way can be really complicated and confusing, mm -hmm. and they have to count each every each different way. There's another way that's a little less. Uh, complicated. This one, I I don't like this one for the more complicated um, versions like even this, uh, but t starting off, we I start them off with a video of a box being slid across the table, and that one they can do pretty easily, uh, just talking about friction and why it slows down. It's, it's a much simpler one, <laughs> but you can see. <laughs> oh. Okay, and I think we 
pointed that the arrows and the energy tracking diagram, so it's just showing how the, <coughs> uh, the metabolic energy goes to kinetic of the child, and then the child goes to the wagon, and looking at all of them, we can keep going. Um, so there's shoving, which is mechanical work. It transfers the kinetic energy. Uh, metabolizing transforms um, metabolic energy to kinetic. So like kind of trans, we've been like emphasizing like the transfer of energy versus the transformation. Of right. So it's the the object transfers the energy to another object, and then the transformation is from one type of uh, one type of energy to another. Yeah. All right, so um, this is what I was talking about, the video that I was showing. Um, if you want to take out a sheet of paper and you can try it. Uh, yeah, show the video. Yep. This is a tissue box that slides to a stop. Yeah, make it big. So it <coughs> and they kind of get frustrated with these diagrams at first, but um, we were having trouble uh, with the conservation of energy aspects where they were not thinking about what the different types of energy were and where they could go to, and this really helps um, bring that home to them. Are you anticipating these types of diagrams are gonna be on future evaluations like the Regents of Canada? So this, so um, not, I wouldn't expect this kind, although they are still aligned with NGSS. There's a simpler kind that Pure Physics puts in that we're gonna show you next. It's, like I said, it's simpler. Um, and that I would expect more because one is easier to, that we're supposed to be following. And that really hits on those, uh, the evidence and the reasoning piece. Uh, but this one follows like making sure that you account for where the energy went. This is gonna be the second type. So this is the type that's in the books that we've been using now. These are like the energy chains, right? Yeah. This so this is, a, this is another example, not using the blocks. So this is how they've been like going through. They, this curriculum starts with energy, which actually, like I never did in like 28 years of teaching physics. Um, I actually, I kind of like it. I don't know if anybody else starts with energy. Um, yeah, yeah, and like the way it phases in, I, I, I kind of like it, but there is some jumping around like to fill in with everything else that we but, need, but we went from energy to forces. Yeah, I think we can smooth that transition out. It's just that the, Pure physics curriculum is not meant for New York State, and New York State, like we're still in flux with NGSS. Um, pure physics is set to be NGSS aligned, so um, it's what we're supposed to be doing eventually, but that's in 2026 and it's only 2023, so we're having to deal with some of that. Um, but we are, the energy, starting with energy, the kids get that much more intuitively than starting with kinematics, um, and we are still throwing in some motion, it's just, focusing on velocity graphs first, um, and focusing on mostly kinetic energy uh, because the potential energy, the gravitational potential is not supposed to happen until after we've talked about gravity. Yeah, the units were like energy, forces, and then gravity, and so like, it's a lot of the graphing, which it seems like it's gonna be, you know, that's always like a weak area for the kids, the graphing, so looking at like, you know, how the velocity is changing, then kinetic energy is increasing, and then when we bring in forces, like when the hand is on the box, that's the only time that the speed is increasing, and if you release it, it flattens out, yep. so. And this like, this curriculum, not to sell you on pure physics, but this is actually very similar to what um, our guest speaker was speaking about, because it's all discussion-based. It's uh, getting the kids to talk to each other, um, and getting them to come up with their uh, understanding and then give that evidence and focusing on that evidence really then they're able to they're like I don't know what's going on and then I talk to them about it and they are able to describe it um, yeah because they, yeah. they discuss like they think about it themselves and they discuss in their groups and like you know everybody gets like equity of voice they call everybody gets a chance to speak and then like you kind of form a circle and um, so now they're within their groups and, and they can they're asking each other like questions like at the beginning, nobody's criticizing, kind of like we did. Like nobody's saying, "What are you kidding me? Oh, it's ooh, boom, 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 and then it goes up." So, like, um, they have to learn that. So, like, you really have to like build those like norms in the classroom. And then um, through the consensus, like building, and when they're asking questions, like really cool things come out that we can see, like higher level questions. But it does take a lot of time. That would be my one thing. Like, it, it's. It's, it's a lot, but even like the but professor I think, was saying. But I think we're still <laughs> on pace. We, 
we're farming this, so we're uh, we had a, a oh, yeah. small problem, but at the it's not small. Yeah. At the beginning of the year, so some of it's just that. Um, but anyway, I think we are still okay. It was actually nice to have this in the classrooms when like the tragedy happened because I feel like the kids were just used to being vulnerable with each other. Yeah. Are they taking the regents with them? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. This is regents physics, not mm -hmm. conceptual. Oh. Yep. Okay, anyway, the uh, this is the type of um, energy diagram that shows up in pure physics. Do you want to talk about that? So it's like basically, they are, they call it like energy giver, energy receiver, so the energy's going. We just stuck like child's to wagon. Um, and so we have the same. Like here. the child gets tired. This is, you can tell, this is the slide that I made. It's like kind of, <laughs> it only took like two and a half hours. <laughs> But anyway, the child is like, this would be his biological um, energy. And this is all the evidence. And I feel like the NGSS is going to be like, they're going to have to give explanations like based on evidence. Like what is the evidence? So um, his speed and height are increasing. So he's gaining kinetic, gaining potential, um, as well as the wagon. So he's, because since he's going up with the wagon, so the wagon's gaining kinetic. What's the evidence? The speed increase, gaining potential. What's the evidence? The height increase. Um, so yeah, the circles can be divided up. So that's just like another model for energy. For energy. Okay. And these are just some pet simulations. We won't go through them, um, but if we can give you this, and just so you are aware, you can do those same kind of energy transformation diagrams uh, with these pet simulations as well. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. When you do this, do you define what the system is beforehand, or are you not worried about that? So actually, um, I don't, because then it lets them be as creative as they want to be, uh, and then we discuss the different aspect, the different um, models that they come up with, and it makes it so that the kids um, they have ownership over their uh, discussions and gives different thinking, and it shows them that it really depends on where you define that. System. Okay, so now the actual lab. So this is the handout that you have. This is, so what do you think this is? Conveyor belt. Um, and if you go down, this is actually Amazon's conveyor belt. Uh, it's a little robot that moves around the, um, the warehouse. And this is a patent, and so the patent makes it so that you can talk to the students about what a patent is and how the engineering design process. And um, most of them haven't seen a patent, or and some of them know what it is, but not all. So you can you can actually make that its own whole lesson or whatever. Um, I don't because we don't have the time, but it is interesting for them to see what that looks like. Okay, uh, if you can <laughs> scroll down, yep, and so. Then uh, I tell them, and I go through, uh, I show them how a package from Amazon gets to a customer's house so quickly, um, and then they have to talk about the energy transformations that occur, because then we can bring in um, the, the uh, fossil fuels and um, talk about the greenhouse gases that comes about with that, and that's part of the energy transformations that also occur. But then we can go down. No, it's okay. Um, they have to create an energy diagram for uh, the conveyor belt that Amazon created because it goes down a little slide. Um, and then their job is to create a, uh, a, a conveyor belt at an incline because we're trying, we're basically making the stair lab, but as an engineering process. So we use all different kinds of mm -hmm. materials. This is one of my students. Um, she finished yesterday and she has not analyzed it yet, so it cannot be broken. Um, <laughs> this was also one of my students. He was so inspired by the project he took at home and he uh, created this. I would like to keep it because I don't know how to do it myself. Um, <coughs> actually, I do, I can't find the pieces. Uh, I think it's Lego Kinetic, or Technic, I think is what he said. Um, and I'm having trouble sourcing the pieces. Anyway, um, he went through this and he built it over the weekend, uh, but I didn't ask them to take it home. She did this in a double period with her group. It was a lab, um, four people in a, a group. She's actually 
one of my weakest students, but she really like tackled this and really got into it. Um, and hers works probably the best, uh, except for his. He's, he doesn't count. <laughs> oh yeah, we have, we have some videos. So. Yeah. <coughs> I mean, we put in our sources that we use. This is the curriculum that we're using, not the book. And we had, the, this is the energy and equity workshop that, that yeah. I was talking about. That's the Amazon patent. And then, um, oh yeah, so then. Oh yeah, so. <laughs> all right, so. <laughs> now we need your help. So then I decided hold I was going to make on. one last weekend that hold was motorized. Oh. So are they going to take, I don't know if you're ahead, ahead of things here, are they going to be taking like data with their conveyor belt? Yeah, so they are to find out the work um, and power that is uh, being transformed in this, um, in, their particular in, in their particular prototype. I set it so that each one should be 100 grams, but that was just for grade ease of grading so I could just see what they yes. got. Um, but you could make it so... Uh, that they could use whatever they wanted um, as the thing that goes up. And something that I realized this time is these are super steep. Um, a lot of the things that they want to put on there fall down. So that's bottle caps works. The bottle caps and the nickel works, actually. Um, so goes up. But again, that's something that they can like, yeah. figure out, too, like what they want to make the belt on. Like if they've done friction, um, like the one that we have that doesn't work has like too much friction on the belt. Yeah. Um, and again, it depends like where you're at in the curriculum. If you want to keep it just like work and power focused, or if you want to. Um, and see, they're not all like beautiful. <laughs> this one, this one doesn't work right now, but that's not the student's fault. That's because it took a tumble in my car. Um, and actually, it's gonna work. Nope, it's not gonna work. Just kidding. Yeah, see, it has a rip in the paper here. Um, but it doesn't have to be super uh, fancy. Um, they just use pencils um, for the thing, for the pencil yeah. here. We're waiting to get a motorized one. Yeah. So the YouTube video that I linked shows, um, this one shows somebody that did, I think this is it. Was, yeah, no, God. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. By the way, my kid taught me you could slow down a YouTube video. I didn't know that. So I was like <laughs> stopping it to get the measurements. So like that looks so easy. So um, that's what, so yesterday, I mean not yesterday, I tried to make this. We have, that's why the one slide I cut titled how many engineers, my brother's like a head engineer at Madison Square Garden at the Sphere at like Las Vegas. So he was helping me. Speaking of patents, my son helped me. He just got his first official patent. I'm very proud. <laughs> He's 24. Last week, um, it came. It was very cool. It doesn't work. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, make one this is, could be how, like, oh, let me turn it this way. Th there are lots of things, especially, like, if the kids have had physics, like, if it's <laughs> AP. Because when we put the motor, now, it, it did kind of fall apart when I took it out of the box this morning. But it was working. Sarah saw. But now it's not working. <laughs> But thanks, Rob gave me his little motor. And I attached ours, and it does work, but what's the problem? No, no, it's it very is. fast. Oh, sorry. It's very yeah, fast. Yeah. So, like that, you could let the kids, like, figure that out, too. Like, well, what can we do to slow down the motor? Mm -hmm. So, we did. We put a potentiometer. Except this, something's wrong. It worked it really good. It slowed down the motor. I actually have a video. Um, and then, like, it, the AP classes, too, know about torque. Like, why do you need the larger wheel, right, like, to turn it? So, like, it turns, but this one obviously has um, a lot of friction. Yeah. So, um, yeah. It was a lot of good memories with my kid, because those of you that have older kids, you know, <laughs> we spent a few hours together. But it still doesn't work. So we don't know if it's the glue, if it's the friction. The motor is not powerful enough. Now that's the other thing. So I did. We did manage to slow down the motor so that. It, but once you put a little um, pressure, it it wouldn't turn. So now, like you could ask the kids, well, how can we? What can we do? Like, do we put you know a nine volt battery? Will that help turn the wheel? So like, if it, if it's you know a more advanced class, or if you do it later in the year. You can use, you know, like different um, troubleshooting like that, I guess. So that's all part of the engineering design. Yes? 
With the Lego one that your student built, Lego actually has a power function motor. Yeah, yeah. That they can hook up to it, yep. and they can have that one as a UV motor on it. Yep. We he only made this um, last Tuesday or Wednesday, so I haven't added a motor, but that's uh, part of the. Actually, I don't have the video, but his brother um, liked doing this so much uh, with him um, that he built a big one. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and, that one, really big and that one is motorized. And that one is motorized. That's really cool because I'm really big into Lego, so I would really yeah. love <laughs> Yeah, he, he did actually motorize it, but I don't have this video. Yes. That's the one in class. That's Cameron. Um, he is the one who worked on this. And then, like, here's some of the, uh, you know, stuff that's not working. This you could see, actually, if it doesn't load. But like one thing with the motor, like that, then they could see like, well, then you could assure that it's a constant speed. Like, what's the advantages? I guess my video is not going to load. But anyway, that just showed the motor and then how it wasn't turning it. Um, so we just, you know, and the kids could. Oh yeah, there it goes. See, it's not like, I don't know if anybody has any ideas. <laughs> so. You know, they could also look at the pros and cons of, you know, each, because that is, again, part of, like, engineering design. Um, and, you know, trying to, you know, go back and, and troubleshoot and figure out, like, what can we do? Um, and the advantages, obviously, for the hand crank is that the materials are more readily available. Um, also, like, they, they'll probably start to look at, like, the weight of these that are you know, the, see if it, like that one has the bottle, you can see it's much lighter. Um, the students can vary the power of the um, conveyor. It doesn't require soldering, because we did a little soldering in the other one. Um, but also, Mike did have that injury with the, yeah, yeah um, with the knife he, cutting the cardboard. That so. was for a STEM career, it was also a freshman for his class, and he had a small accident with the conveyor, with the thing, but he should have, I used scissors as mine. Oh, yeah, because you yeah. needed all, like, it, like maybe it would even be, like, if you were going to try the motorized one in class, it might even pay to maybe, like, well, they're supposed to be designing it, though. Yeah. yeah. So you couldn't really pre-cut. No. It'd probably be easier, like, because you really, they'll learn, too, because when this one was lined up, like, if it's tilted, then it's going to, you know, the belt is going to slide, so they have to figure out, drill both holes at yeah. once. So <clears throat> this one works really well because it's so well aligned. Um, some of the other ones that I didn't bring in, they're lopsided and they don't turn nearly as well. Mm -hmm. And we're able to talk with each other about why that is. Um, and that really, they're like, oh, that makes a difference. So they were able to fix theirs. And like, you know, like same thing with the stair lab, like that was one of the things at the end of the stair lab was like when, I mean, I, when, we, when I used to teach it, it was like, well, what else like about the kinetic energy? Like, did they have a running start? Did they start from rest and accelerate? Was their speed kept constant? So just if you're looking at the whole system, they can, you know, see like with the conveyor, can we keep it consistent? Um, I think that's it. Okay. So, yep, these are the so that's it. Anybody have any questions? <laughs>